Hi, I'm Dave Chung, Chief Medical Officer of Joint Pediatric Enterprise of Children's Health and UT Southwestern Medical Center. And welcome to the In the Know video series. Welcome. Today we have Dr. Ranas Saeed, who's a professor of neurology and pediatric at UT Southwestern Children's Health. Welcome. Hi, nice to be Good here. Good to have you. It's very nice to be well, here. Well, you have a lot of exciting things going on in the yeah. department and the yeah. division. So tell us about what's happening in neurology. Yeah, so uh, I think one of the big pivotal things that's been going on is um, our expansion in the northern market. Um, exactly a year ago, actually on August 1st, we celebrated our one-year mm. anniversary in Plano, where we completely took over the outpatient practice. We've also taken over the inpatient practice, and it's just been such a wonderful collaboration. Um, every day of the week, we've got full clinics. Our, we have subspecialists there. We have general neurologists. We just see everything that walks in the door. We've expanded also to Prosper. Mm -hmm. So we now have um, full-time neurology um, presence in Prosper. It was a new model for, for the mm -hmm. JPE and we were able to partner the UT Southwestern Pediatric Group with Children's in this sort of coordinated care model. And I think it was really successful. And, um, and we're still hiring because we're still growing, trying to take care of people where they are. Let's talk about a little bit about uh, broadly neurology program. I know that you do a lot with epilepsy programs and tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I think that being an epileptologist is really one of the most rewarding things. When I go back and I think of all the different specialties that I could have gone through, I still go back to being a pediatric epileptologist. With the advent of our genetic discoveries, we are all now really genetics and epilepsy and many of our diseases is at the forefront. Literally disorders that in my training, we would comfort and provide diagnosis and symptomatic care, we are now curing. Um, we now have centers of excellence uh, that I'm really proud of. You know, centers of excellence, initially people thought it was just like, well, you're going to see the certain dis yeah. disorder um, and you're just gonna like take care of them clinically and how is it different? But what's different is that we can offer research and clinical trials mm -hmm. and that's a natural history studies and that's really important to our families. So we're very proud of our new center of excellence in Angelman syndrome. Um, we have the Rett syndrome. We're working towards tuberous sclerosis, Drave. As we look to the next frontier, I think we really are excited about um, neurocritical care. Mm. I think that's the next area for true expansion and um, and we've got, we're continually actively recruiting in that field also. So our neurology program has to be one of the leading programs and the largest, if not. I know that we like superlatives and I think that we are, you know, is um, we're actually this year going to be expanding our residency to seven residents right. a year. When we look at the number of trainees we have on our roster this year at 28, that's quite large for neurology training programs. Um, our fellowship directors are highly engaged and our faculty just loves teaching and loves taking care of the patients that we can take care right. of. And I think for a trainee that translates into, if you see a disorder or you see a condition that piques your interest, you're gonna have faculty that are studying it, that are interested in it, and it really yeah. spurs the next generation. I think the other unique thing about our program is that so many of our graduates choose to stay and they want to come back. Either they've gone away and they've come back or they've decided to stay and do their training with us and then stay on as faculty. And that's very, uh, I'm very proud of that. You know, I've been a program director for the training program now. This is my 19th year. So many generations of our own graduates are now colleagues who surpass everything I'm doing myself. Well, speaking of epilepsy program, is there some things that that you do outside the four walls of a hospital actually mm -hmm. providing clinical care? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very into advocacy. Um, and um, one of the 
why week long things that I do every year that just is a total cup filler is my my time as the medical director for um, uh, epilepsy camp. Mm -hmm. It's called Camp Kaleidoscope and it's for teenagers 15 to 19 living with epilepsy. And for that week, um, I'm the medical director and I bring a team of nurses and um, a nurse practitioner. We have one of our EEG techs who's also an EMT, so he comes too. Mm. And we do everything to take care of kids and allow them to stay. So kids have seizures, we take care of them and we keep them, we don't send them home. You know, And it's so remarkable, I have to give my 100% because mm. these kids, they'll have maybe had a convulsion, we've taken care of them, maybe they've had an abrasion, we keep them in the infirmary for a little bit. And then the next thing, as soon as they're like alert enough, they're like, I wanna go back. Let me go back to the dance. Let me go back to the rock wall. Let me go back. So if they're going back, then we are there. We're yeah. coming back every year. So what's to sort of expect more from a neurology program and this great partnership with UT and Children's Health in the coming months or coming years? I know you've talked about gene therapy and other exciting programs. Yeah, I think that the frontier of what we're doing in epilepsy it's not just medicine anymore, yeah. although medicines are important. Kids who were not candidates for epilepsy surgeries, now with the advent of neuromodulation, that's a whole new frontier. It's so interesting to think of disorders that a few years ago we comforted and supported, now we're talking about cures. Our headache and concussion programs are really quite remarkable. Mm. Um, you know, when you have a condition that's associated with pain, timely presentation and getting into the doctor are really important. Right. You know, maybe there's other conditions you could sort of wait another week or so, but when your child's in pain or they've had a concussion and they can't go back to play or back to school, um, getting in the door quickly is very important. And our team has worked so hard to, to make sure that that happens. The, the other part of it is that because we're training programs, we're always on the cutting edge. And I think that when you come to see our headache program specialists, they are always going to be giving you the latest and up-to-date right. therapies. And we understand that a child is a full person. And so one of the things is that we have the supports of social workers, case managers, school services, these things are pivotal, you know, otherwise you're just maybe yeah. saying, here's your headache, do this. But we have all the supports that our patients need. So would you say this dietary uh, sort of is important part of our comprehensive? It's still, yeah, it's still very important part of our comprehensive care. We use it, let's say in a child who has refractory status epilepticus, mm -hmm. we're putting our kids on the ketogenic diet in the ICU, offering it to those who have certain rare metabolic conditions where the mm -hmm. diet is the cornerstone. Um, also for other children who have refractory epilepsies um, and knowing that it is an important tool in our tool of treatments for children with refractory epilepsy. It's really about education. Um, the worst thing that happened for the diet is now that it's sort of become a fad like Uncle Bob's on the keto diet and trying <laughs> to lose weight. And so we really try and emphasize to families that it's metabolically stressful and that we have to manage it. Families really find dietary therapy to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And many families who worry about potential side effects of medications really want to have those conversations about dietary therapy. Um, we actually have a trial ongoing now too for children with end-stage brain tumors who have failed conventional therapies uh, for use of the ketogenic diet in those in, as an intervention because mm -hmm. we know that often brain tumors, especially rapidly growing tumors, are obligate users of carbohydrates. Yeah. And so by providing an alternative source of nutrition to the brain, which is ketones, we can starve brain tumors. So that's, a, that's an ongoing study. Well, you're, you're a true exemplary academic uh, physician who Thank wear you. the hat of being a great teacher, a clinician, a educator, um, researcher and again credit to you and your great leadership we're incredibly grateful oh, so thank you we, i know that we have a lot more exciting new programs that are coming up yes. in the near future yes. so thanks for taking thank you some you. time about to spend uh, elaborating and explaining to us all, all the great work that you're doing thank okay. you thank right. you we have wonderful teams thanks Anna. Thank you.